meeting is live. Thanks, Chris. All right. Um, I'd like to call to order the Finance Committee meeting of Tuesday, May 11th, 2021. It is 1.04 p.m. and we're live on a digital platform. Um, we, uh, we have more items on the agenda than one would have anticipated today. Um, nine items on our agenda. And uh, I actually neglected to ask before we uh, started the meeting, does anyone have any reason why they uh, need to get out of here ASAP? Or can I take things in order? All right. Here, Mark's nothing. raising his hand, Liz. Pardon me? Mark, Mark Killian was raising his hand. Okay, well, Mark, you're one on the agenda anyway. <laughs> does it work for okay. you if we take care of you first? Yep, absolutely. That's why I didn't say anything. All right, <laughs> great. Um, all right, item number one, then, is a resolution uh, for the 2020 state fire grant. Mr. Killian? Oh, good afternoon. So, uh, yeah, this resolution is for the uh, 2020 state fire grant. Um, this is a... Uh, generally a yearly grant award. Um, this year it's in the amount of $13,659.21. Um, and that will pay our yearly payment, uh, part, the majority of our yearly payment to uh, M&T Bank for our, uh, our command vehicle. Um, that uh, again comes from the state fire commissioner and you have all the uh, documentation, the grant agreement there. I uh, should have all that in front of you. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and, and we we discussed this, I think, at um, some length last year when we when we actually purchased the Tahoe. But uh, um, any questions from any members of finance? No, Liz. Okay, Bonnie, you okay too? Okay. Um, then I uh, I'll take a motion. I, I don't have any questions either, Chief Kilian. I'll make a motion. We forward the full body of council with a positive recommendation. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Chief, get going. Thank you. Um, <laughs> thanks, thanks, for, uh, thanks for coming and being with us. Uh, all right. Oop. Sorry, guys. Still up the wrong app here. Um, all right. The next item on our agenda then uh, is a resolution awarding the construction services for like Homing Creek Scour Repair, um, the, Elm, the Elm Park Project to Earthwork Services, LLC. Mr. Sander? Yes, hi, Liz. Yeah, this hi. is a uh, resolution. I hate doing uh, resolution awarding the construction of the uh, scout repair at Larry Down Park to Earthwork Services. Earthwork Services out of Danville. I've spoken to them several times. They are good to go on the project. Their base low bid was $36,941.67. However, I have to read all 11 bidders to satisfy public bidding requirements for Austin. So Bear with me a minute, guys. I got to go through all 11 of the bidders on, or excuse me, yeah, 11 of the bidders on this project. So <clears throat> all the bidders, Earthwork Services low bid was $36,941.67. John Clark Excavating's low bid was $39,758. Sylvania Sites low bid was, bid was $39,888. Insinger Excavating bid $42,638. Masters Excavating bid 44570 LTT Trucking bid 48870 Mitchell Knorr Contracting bid 50195 Pawbaker bid 55860 uh, Stonewood Landscaping bid uh, $56,045. Watson Excavating bid $56,204. Delaware Utility Contractors bid $59,540. Uh, Smith Excavating bid $61,528. Wolniak uh, bid $63,337. DGR Excavating bid $73,955. Landserve bid $84,559. HRI bid $93,852. Mason Dixon Energy Services bid $98,580. And Sil Sikor Brothers bid 194,900 on the dot. So sorry about all that, but it's so I'm awarding to the low bidder who is Earthwork. I'm trying to award to the low bidder, which is Earthwork Services. Um, in the packet of information I sent you was a whole was a slew of pictures that I took back last summer. I tried this is a little area of scour along like coming creek. You saw the uh, aerial image, it's a spot where like coming creek turns. There's a sharp bend to the south and high water flow, uh, flood flows impact the bank there. It's been an ongoing problem for about 10 or 12 years. 
the Army Corps actually found it with their yearly inspection last year. If we catch it within, I think, 60 days, the Army Corps can actually uh, pay for the repairs themselves. However, it was not caught within the the uh, 60 day time period. I tried to get them to, to uh, pay for it, but uh, I was denied. So I had to put it out the contract. So that's where we're at today. Um, in the packet of information that I sent to you and just sent oh, to you guys again, the council that is, you see everything in there as far as the bids, the questions during advertisement, my uh, advertisement of the project. Um, oh, Natalie, honey, I'm on a stop. Sorry guys. <laughs> I got a plan view of the, project area and a detail of what is essentially happening. What this is, is the contractor is going to be required to build a causeway across like coming Creek from the, from the West to the East, most two thirds of the way across the Creek with rock and then place uh, R seven rock, which is uh, three foot deep, which is the minimum placement depth per the pen dot four weight specifications to uh, armor that bank that's washed away. Uh, it's at the toe of the levee, so it, if it continues to be compromised, it could, we could have an issue with the, the stability of the levee at that location. Uh, anything else? Nothing else major pops out to me. Um, I talked to Joe Pollock. We do have funds available for uh, levee repair work. Um, we have all the contract documents, bid bond from the contractor, and uh, that's all I got. Any questions? Bonnie, Adam? Uh, John, uh, boy, there's such a, a wide expanse of, of uh, people who bid on this. The, being the low bid of uh, 36,941.67, is that, is that going to cover everything that you just discussed? Uh, they, they bid on all the entire project. Uh, not just the project, but there I broke the project down into eight pay items, and they bid a dollar figure for every single one. So they might be just a hungry contractor. Uh, I've spoken to them three times, twice a couple months ago, and then just today they are good to go. They're just waiting until the water uh, summer for low flow when the water comes down. It's been yeah, obviously pretty wet, and they are going to uh, build the project. Um, my estimate internal was about 50, 60 grand. So uh, they might, might just be a contractor looking for work, so. That, that's pretty fantastic. I just have a, this was not put on resolution paper. Janice, do you realize that? I do have it. Uh, it's in her, it was in her uh, mailbox. Okay, yeah. as, long as, she, as long as she has it for resolution paper. I don't have any other questions. Okay, Adam, anything from you? Uh, no questions, and I'll uh, I'll be abstaining from this one with a uh, personal conflict. Oh yeah, absolutely. Sorry, yeah, I, I, that's in my mind. Um, one item, one item I wanted to add. Sorry about this. Uh, apologize sure. to uh, with the causeway. So the causeway is a temporary. The whole project should take right once they get the trees cleared, which which is a part of the contract as well. Then when they extend the causeway out into the creek, um, which literally will take a couple of days. The whole project going once they're in the water, maybe a week tops, if that. But once they pull the causeway back with their with their excavator, that rock that they use to build the causeway, R six and R three rock becomes the city of Waynesport. Since we're paying for it, we we're going to stockpile it on site there at uh, Streets and Park, which is right next nearby. So, okay. sorry. So that was one of my questions. So they will be pulling all the rock back out of the creek. All of it, yes, correct. And it'll become proper uh, city property. Okay, and they'll be transporting it to city property for us. Is right next to it, right next door. Yes, yes. Uh, wait. So where will it, it? It'll be stored at streets and parks, right? Yes, stored at streets and parks. Yep. Not not on site in some way or in the fire facility down there. Okay. Oh, um, no, you can't you can't store within the floodway. No. Yeah, I, I wouldn't think so. That would seem like a bad idea. <laughs> but uh, okay, and then um, so at, they'll w explain to me, John. Sure. Out of curiosity, there's a road right on the other side of the levee. Yeah. Why are they not using that to get to this area to repair the scour? Good question. Uh, when I was there with, with the Army Corps of Engineers last September, yeah, September, there's a little access road that in theory you could come down, you mean from the bike path you're talking about? 
I mean, I'm, I'm looking, yeah, there, I mean, there definitely is access from the bike path further up. There is the bike path itself. Um, yeah. And then the road that runs kind of from Lifflin Skate Park down into like the, the mulch pile area, I believe. Um, you know, there's existing access basically, you know, within what, maybe 40 yards? Yeah. Contractor, the Army Corps would not allow a contractor to drive on the wet side of the levee unless there was an existing access road. So Got the it. only... Yeah, so the, the only closest, the closest one is the one you see in that little plan view where there actually is a true designed access road and we're going to use it to get down to the site. Okay. It just seems so phenomenally destructive <laughs> compared to just going over the levee, but uh, I guess that's how it works. Um, about about we'll 10 years ago, just about uh -huh. 10 years ago, about 10 years ago, this area was actually cleared for, uh, there was, I think there was some debris that was left there during a flood so that the tree clearing shouldn't be that should not be that significant because the tree shouldn't be that, you know, large. Got it. So the, the, uh, the satellite is not recent perhaps, or? That satellite image is, I think it's from 2016, I think. Okay. So, so it would show up as more of an alley there already. Um, yeah. In terms of, okay. Got it. Uh, cause I was going to say that looks like it's full of mature trees, <laughs> but, um, Okay. Uh, but I think that's it. I, I mean, I do somewhat share Bonnie's concern with the wide range of the bids that came in, um, only because, uh, I mean, the, the good news is that the wide range of the bids pretty much, you know, th there were several in the 30s and then on up, but it's still surprising to have a project that seems relatively cut and dried and get bids that range from $36,000 to close to $200,000 for the same scope of work. Um, but, uh, but I'm going to assume since we had several bids right in that, um, thirties range that, uh, that, that 36 is a, is, is, I mean, it's a good bid. We know there are responsive and responsible bidder, correct? So I think we, we, that's, that's the best we can do. Um, and it's good to get it done for, for less than what we anticipated. Uh, Joe Pavlock, I'm this, this, while we will be taking it from levy funds was not one of the foreseen levy projects, correct? Um, I was aware of it last year, um, and we have funds and, and encumbered funds from prior year's budgets that we can use if, if the other funds from this year are necessary. To Got it. Um, I guess what I'm asking is when we, when we started setting aside those funds for the levy, we were looking for the massive infrastructure repairs that are going to be required here that, that we are working on making a reality. Um, they, they weren't really, we, we weren't setting those funds aside for a sort of small um, repair items that might crop up, but uh, there's no reason the administration believes that we should be hanging on to those levy funds for larger projects and not not putting them to this use instead. Do you understand my question? I, I think that I do. Um, I thought that the money that we were setting aside and budgeting year to year uh, was to be used towards match for these um, grant opportunities that are out there. Uh, right mm -hmm. now, this is something that's an emergency and needs to get done. So uh, we need to use the, the, the uh, funds that are available and that will come from uh, those right. incurred funds. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think that makes the most sense and, and clearly it needs to be addressed, but um, what will that leave us in terms of set aside for matching funds? Uh, I'll have to pull up the spreadsheets for that. I can have that for Thursday. Thanks, Joe, I'd appreciate it. Um, okay. Uh, aside from that, yeah, I don't see any issues with this. Um, and uh, Adam will be abstaining. So Bonnie, I think you should make a motion and I'll second. Mm, I make a motion to pass this on to a full body of council with a positive recommendation. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Adam, for the record, would you also say abstain? Abstain. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, then uh, thanks, Mr. Sander, for, for bringing that to us. Um, and it's good to see it get taken care of in a pretty timely fashion. Um, uh, I'm assuming in future, we're focusing on catching things like this in that 60-day window, correct? Yes. Yeah, I spoke okay. to our flood control folks to keep, when there's bank full flood discharge to uh, monitor, to essentially ride the entire levy system to try to catch this so we're not, we don't have to do this. But just being aware that... <laughs> We have miles of levy. Uh, things need maintained. So in the, maybe you haven't seen this in the past, but we, uh, it is our responsibility as the levy sponsor. The city of Williamsport is the levy sponsor. 
It is our responsibility to maintain the levy. Now, there are some things that we can, yes, have the Army Corps uh, fund. Uh, this particular one wasn't caught in time, but it is our responsibility. Got it. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we recognize that responsibility, despite the fact that we haven't been living up to it for um, five or six decades now. Uh, but um, but uh, I mean, that said, if there is an opportunity to have it paid for by another entity, if we um, if we move quickly on the item, clearly it's in our best interest and will save us thousands and thousands of dollars to, to try and make certain that we keep a close eye on the levy and the levy's um, state of repair. Uh, Agreed. Agreed. Okay, <laughs> great. I mean, yeah, we're never, we're never adverse to taking money if somebody else is willing to pay for it, right? We simply know that it's our responsibility if somebody else isn't. <laughs> and, um, okay, uh, item number three is a resolution to approve CDBG CV Health and Welfare Public Service Projects. Mr. Mamie? Thank you, Liz. Uh, good afternoon, uh, members of the Finance Committee. With me today is the newest uh, member of the staff here in the Office of Community and Economic Development, our new deputy director, Chelsea Blair, who was integral in putting all these programs together. So the first one we're bringing to you today is part of the COVID-19 CARES Act funding that was allocated to the city through housing and urban development. These funds were approved by Council for Health and Welfare Public Services. We bring to you two public service projects combined into one resolution as they are being drawn down from the same source of CDBG CV funding. The first is the Williamsport vaccination awareness campaign in the amount of $49,985. This is a public health service provided through the River Valley Health and Dental Association, uh, River Valley Dental, along with a partnership with STEP, developed an, an awareness campaign strategy for COVID-19 vaccines. All media material will have to be approved by the city's community and economic development department before it is released. In addition to developing the campaign, STEP is assisting in the transportation to River Valley for low to moderate income individuals to receive vaccines. The second project under this resolution is for the Williamsport, Williamsport YWCA facility re renovations in the amount of $40,000. These renovations will assist abused children and battered spouses. Renovations include finalization of the outdoor play area for children who are receiving Y services. In addition, the kitchen where multiple families cook at a time will be expanded to meet COVID guidelines. The Y currently has $47,000 in matching funds from generous donors to complete both projects. Um, I'll answer any questions on this item that you may have. Thanks, Skip. Um, Bonnie, Adam, any questions? I don't have any questions. No, I don't have any questions either. Um, both are no-brainers. Yeah, I think that's clear. So, Skip, the total pool of funding here is six hundred nine thousand. Um, yes, what uh, further projects is the administration contemplating? Well, we 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 are working with the food bank right now. And, mm -hmm. and, and other associations with, with STEP and others to see what projects make sense for the city to, to be involved in. Uh, the county released about $7.2 million to STEP to do housing and, and, and rental assistance. And, and so we're focusing on other opportunities to use these in, in, in coordination with those kinds of programs. Excellent. Um, that's good. Uh, and the idea is primarily to, to serve as a pass-through agency for funds to other entities with this okay. money. We won't yeah. be anticipating any of it in-house for projects. Okay. 
Um, is there, uh, do we anticipate any further funding coming down from the federal government specifically for, it seems well, like, it seems like everybody's handing out money, Skip, I'm just asking. <laughs> well, well, we do know that there's going to be, or at least we expect $900,000 of home funds through the uh, COVID-19 American Cares Act, I believe. So, mm -hmm. but we haven't received the letter yet. So it, it's only on the word of our, our uh, the person that we discussed, Christine Jones at, at HUD. Okay, got it. Um, yeah, just sort of asking. And that, that as well, we would anticipate using as basically a pass-through. Well, there may be projects that, that the city may look at as, as you'll see a little bit further on in, in the mm -hmm. four projects that we bring in that the city can use the funds for items directly involving the city. Right. Um, yeah, I think uh, clearly a mix, a mix of the two is desirable, but um, it, it would be in some ways, I think nice to see us undertake some of those community outreach oriented items if we can find the staff for it. Um, just because uh, I think it would be nice for people to have the impression that the city of Williamsport itself was doing some, was, was, engaging in work related to the pandemic um, in a positive fashion. So, um, and Chelsea, we are delighted to see you back. <laughs> I'm so glad to be back. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and, I, and I see that you're doing good work already. So, um, excellent. <laughs> uh, if, uh, if no one else has any further questions, I would um, take a motion, please. I'll make a motion we forward to the full body of council with a positive recommendation. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, moving on to the next item on our agenda here. Um, I have a resolution to approve a CARES Act amendment to the 2019 Annual Action Plan. Mr. Remy. Thank you. Um, this, the second item is a resolution to substantially amend the 2019 Annual Action Plan. This resolution is a requirement by HUD to accept the third round of CDBG CV funding from the CARES Act. These funds are in the total of $228,630 and are for services including, but not limited to economic sustainability and recovery, employment, education, and recreation. I'll answer any questions. Bonnie. Or Adam, sorry. I'm sorry, Adam. I I don't have any questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, nor do I. And, and and I don't really either. Um, Skip. Then what? I guess the only thing is, um, what will our total? Assuming that that number of around nine hundred thousand um, dollars makes an appearance as well, what what does that make our total um, receipt for CARES Act slash America CARES Act funding? Um, mm -hmm. Somewhere about $1.7 million. Okay. Um, that's a nice sum. Uh, it's, yeah, I think it, it, it can and will make a big difference in the community. Um, all right, I will take a motion. I make a motion we pass this on to the full body of council with a positive recommendation. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Moving on to our uh, item number five on our agenda, a resolution to approve a CDBG CV3 project. Skip, um, back to you. <laughs> sorry to take up all this meeting, but this is the third item of which the resolution that you just passed is going to be funding. Um, these funds are from the COVID-19 CARES Act. It's the third round allocation. Um, the annual action plan amendment was the second item we, we, we presented to you this afternoon. Um, the sustainability and recovery project for $228,630. Through this project, multiple projects and resolutions will be developed to not only recover from COVID-19, but will also make the community as a whole more resilient to future pandemics. This multi-phase project will first focus on project design and development 
based on functionality and efficiencies of all community sectors during COVID-19. This does include the work being completed by eConsult Solutions. The second will be project implementation and construction based on phase one. Again, this project will correct any inefficiencies and will result in the community as a whole being more resilient for future pandemics and or disasters. Again, any questions? Uh, Bonnie, Adam? Uh, the question I have is on the second page, Skip, uh, project national objective, and it says population. Is that the population of Williamsport? 26,415. Yes. Was the last census number, right? Yeah, so this is a number that was given to us by HUD. Um, for the designation of low to moderate income um, variables. This is based on the American Community Survey of 2015. Um, this is what they legally tell us is what our population is to classify for any LMI area benefits. Hmm. But that's not the population total, is it? As according to the American Community Survey, it is. I had to do a little bit of research into that myself because it seemed a little bit low, but that was the classification that they had based on the 2015 American Community Survey. We always assumed our population was like 29,000. Bonnie, so I, would, kind of, I would I probably- I think the last census dropped it. Yeah. I, I know it dropped, but boy, that's a tremendous drop. Yeah, I, I'll be curious to see what the census data comes out comes back with from last year but i mean if you look at 2010 census i think it was like 29 28 and, and i know that they there's multiple you know acs um is one of them there's multiple throughout every decade that they do these as well i think the key point is the trend continues to to go down which which so, we need to work yeah correct um but the other thing is too i think that the, there there is a little bit I would assume that there's probably a little bit of a buffer in each of those um, in each of those surveys as well. And to add on to that too, the way that the American Community Survey is done is they kind of do like a sample analysis of who responds and who doesn't. Um, so they'll send out um, surveys to different community members and depending on responses back or depending on how it's mailed out and that kind of stuff will actually change the population as well. Again, the American Community Survey is kind of more of their educated estimate. It's not actually the full-blown factual number. Okay, and you and I are both aware that when uh, surveys are mailed out, the response rate is, uh, I don't know what the percentage is, but it's not accurate. <laughs> Correct. Okay. I just, when I saw that, it was like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I know it is. I, I, I think the number that I had sort of internalized is somewhere around 27 now, but you know, I, I, I do think it's a moving target. And of course, when we have a, an, uh, a response rate that is um, low, which I think we do in certain communities in the city, then that makes it harder for us yeah. to, get a, um, to get a really good count. Excuse me. Um, I don't have any, any other questions. questions Bonnie? Okay, anything from you, Adam? No, no additional questions. Okay. Um, then oh, uh, I think the only question I have is um, the funding summary, uh, Skip and Chelsea. Uh, so we have the CDBGCV funds uh, of uh, 228,630, other committed of 110 and undetermined of 50. Uh, talk to me about the, the 110 and the 50. Well, the... Uh, Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, just 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 flesh those out for me a little bit. You said this um, obviously uh, is related to our strategic planning grant with eConsult, so I'm assuming some of that is state funding. Um, the undetermined is mostly what's of concern to me. Uh, the, what's that? the undetermined is going to be up to council as to how they want to spend it as we okay. go forward. The about the other part of that is the funding necessary for the potential. Uh, 
analysis being conducted by Lancaster County Economic okay. Development. Got it. Um, so we have the funding for the sort of economic development slash strategic financial, financial planning project outlined. And then we have an additional $50,000 that we will need to find um, for what, what phase of the project and what element of implementation is that? Talk to me about what that $50,000 would address. Uh, bas basically, whatever project may come out of the study or analysis, or if, if, if there's going to be a marketing campaign or, or whatever is determined to be the, the appropriate use for those funds once we have the other uh, analysis is completed. It'll be Got up it. to council as to how they would like to use this, the yeah. administration and council as to how they would use that other $50,000. We just thought it was easier to earmark all of it so that we had the required funds for whatever projects may come forward. Got it. But it seems though that then, I mean, if we're looking at implementation of some pretty hefty planning, um, uh, you know, uh, that we're undertaking, you could also plug a number in there, a couple of million bucks in the hopes that we would have the funding to pursue implementation more, more um, broadly. But um, so that 50,000 is not something that we need to find the funding for. It's looking at some small, you know, small right. I elements that will come out of the- It could be used as your match. For, for, for all the pro programs that'll provide funding. Excellent. Okay. All right. Um, well, yeah, this, this is, uh, yeah, this is an exceptionally exciting project to me, um, especially um, coming out of, uh, of kind of a, a COVID relief element, because it's, it's something that the city, um, that while COVID has sort of ramped up our need for this, um, the city has, has been struggling uh, to, to do it adequate planning, I think, for a long time. So to, to be able to do it now, in part um, because of the pandemic, is, is really exciting. Um, if there are no other questions, anybody Liz, else? Yes, I do have one, uh, sure. one other question. Skip, are there any stipulations on this of what can and cannot be used? It has to be COVID related. It all has to be COVID related. Correct. Okay. Um, but I'm assuming, I mean, obviously the city's financial situation is pretty well tied to COVID at this point. Yeah, um, that's, and that's why we were able to do this. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that, I think that makes perfect sense. Um, okay, uh, Bonnie, anything else? No, that's all. Okay, uh, then I will take a motion, please. Make a motion to forward the full body of council with a positive recommendation. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, fantastic. Well, we're just ripping through this agenda today. Um, this is a nice change from the last couple of weeks. <laughs> um, then the uh, final item for here on today's agenda is item number six, a resolution to approve the fiscal year 2021 annual action plan for the community development block grant and home investment partnership programs. Skip. Thank you. Um, the fourth item is the resolution to approve the 2021 annual action plan for CDBG and home for the city of Williamsport to receive federal funding for affordable housing and community development initiatives, benefiting primarily low to moderate income persons. This annual plan consolidates into a single document, the planning and application requirements for the United States Housing and Urban Development. The 2021 Annual Action Plan is consistent with the priorities and goals set up under the 2020 to 2024 Consolidated Plan. And I'll answer any questions. Uh, Bonnie, Adam? No, I don't have any questions. Uh, I don't have any questions either. Uh, Skip, the one thing I would ask is, given the public platform, is there anything that you would like to highlight um, sort of as, as interesting work uh, within the community that the public should know more about or anything that we should discuss in greater depth on uh, Thursday from your perspective? Well, we had discussed all of these items at the budget hearings and, and pretty well, uh, I thought thoroughly, presented them at that time. The only thing I can add is 
that we do know the allocation for this year, which at that time we were taking a good guess. And the allocation for 2021 is, for the CDBG program is $1,048,338. And for the home program is two hundred and forty five. dollars Two seventy nine. And how does that compare to our expectations? I don't remember what the numbers were. It is a little bit higher than our expectations. Not much, a couple hundred bucks, but it's better than losing money. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, that doesn't seem to ever happen, does it? Uh, this is an exciting time to be a person, <laughs> to be a city, an elected official or a person working for a city here. Um, Anyway, uh, yeah, I don't really have any further questions either. Uh, hearing nothing then from anyone else on the meeting, I would take a motion. I make a motion. We pass this on to a full body of council with a positive recommendation. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, okay. Thank All right. You. Yep. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Um, then the only item remaining on our agenda, and we have, I think, ample time to have a look at it uh, this time, only two items, are the financial quarterly report um, drafts and the financial monthlies um, that, we, that we passed on from last time because we had a meeting that ran uh, so very long uh, last finance meeting. Um, so uh, I guess we'll start out with the financial quarterly report draft. Uh, Mr. Pavlak, do you have anything to... Um, to say about this item? Um, just looking that you you have the, the 1231-20 draft. Um, we're still working on through closing out the year there. Uh, currently we're falling within or better than um, the budget projections for 2020, which is a positive. Um, so we'll continue to work that out, uh, finish up all the accruals and, and work on getting those numbers uh, solidified. Um, looking at the, the first quarter of 2021, um, I think we're, typic we're, we're in the same boat that we typically are. Um, I looked from the tax standpoint um, on the real estate taxes uh, to compare this year today uh, versus last year, and um, we're up. Um, over what our collections were last year. I know there were different um, circumstances in place last year, which delayed some collections and things of that nature, but it seems like we're back on track um, from that respect. And from the tax anticipation note, uh, we did not, we have not drawn on it at, as of this time hmm. and don't foresee doing that. Um, barring really? any issues. Well, that's surprising. Um, that's, that's excellent. Uh, uh, in all consideration, I think last year, the total drawdown on that was 200,000 of the 2 million um, with everything else that was going on. So we're working to, to, to get things done on time and um, borrow the least amount possible to, to make that happen. Got it. Um, and you're doing good work. Thanks, Joe. We appreciate it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna say that first, um, Bonnie and Adam, if you're okay with it, I would suggest that maybe we look at um, the 1231 report or what's, what's your preference? Is there, is there one that you'd rather see than another? No. Yeah, that's, that's fine, Liz. That's it. it goes with what you said. Um, okay. All right. Uh, then what questions do we have um, so far here, I'm just. Uh, I apologize, Joe. I put I pushed it back and then and then didn't really have time to go back and see what questions I had last time for you. Um, Don't worry, I'll be in the same boat when it comes for the answers. <laughs> Excellent. The only, at least for last year, for the end of last year, the only question I have is like, what what takes so long to close out the year? I mean, we're in March or in in May. Uh, Mm. And I'm in an office of two, so ah. I'm just going to say staffing and, and other considerations. So mm -hmm. um, I'm working on getting it through it as quick as I can, but there are a number of other things going on uh, right now that 
a majority of the items are taken care of. There are a few accruals that take longer to get in. Okay. Um, namely the the um, health surplus. But I do yeah. believe those numbers are available, and and that's the last major thing that I'm looking at, um, pending auditor review. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. And, and also, I think once, you know, if and when we get everything uh, in the digital format, uh, council, and I think that's going to, I think that's going to obviously make a, a huge difference too. Yeah. Uh, when we start to reconcile everything, uh, so that, I think that would. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, speaking real quick of the, of the Benecon, of the, the health surplus, um, I know that we had discussed uh, just kind of shopping around a little bit, maybe RFPing our um, health insurance this year. Um, it would seem like it might be wise for us to set aside some time, maybe in a finance committee meeting in a couple of months to look at um, the current profile of our insurance costs. Um, I know I, I know that I don't feel like I have a real firm grasp on them because of that whole, the idea of we pay in X and then we get money back. And, and I don't really precisely have a firm grasp of, of what that money back means for the, for the overall cost of our health insurance on an annual basis. I'm sensing that it's kind of a drop in the bucket, but, um, but nonetheless, it would be, um, I think it might be useful for us to start kind of fleshing out what it is we've currently got going on before we start the process of, of um, seeing if we can get a better deal elsewhere. Uh, yeah. so just, I, if, just quickly uh -huh. on that one, we self-insure um, our plan. So at, at the beginning of every year, the, the self-insured uh, administrator reviews our prior claims and comes up with an actuarial determ actuarially determined number um, of what they expect us to need to fund that plan. Um, if their expectations um, exceed what we actually spend, we get money back. If, if we don't, um, then other members will help us to, to make up that difference um, and then they'll readjust it going forward. So basically you're, you're, you're self-funding a pot of money to pay the claims. Um, if you put too much money in the pot, you get the money back. Got it. This yeah. is a fully insured market where you're paying a premium and, and um, That's what you, you could have, you know, an excellent year and you're not going to see any of that money back um, mm -hmm. in your pockets. So yeah. I, I know that from the, the health insurance standpoint, um, HR has, uh, I think has been looking for some, I guess, direction on, on what we want to look at do to, to do with that. So it might be best to, to get her involved in that conversation. And, and econsult right. it's going to be part of their review as well. Yes. Yeah. So maybe we should look at um, early in the next quarter, you know, maybe after we conclude kind of June, having a look at our healthcare costs, because if we're going to shop around, that would be a good time to get that whole process started. Right. Uh, not necessarily. Um, um, I no? believe that there's a six month window um, to make any changes. So if we don't, and, and again, I need to clarify, that, but if, if we don't get anything done by uh, June. June 30, it would take an, an, another year and a half to. Yeah. Okay. Excellent point. Yes. I forgot about that. Um, so Mayor Slaughter, I guess you tell me, are we interested in trying to RFP health services uh, or health insurance um, prior to the end of June? Sure, that's, yeah, I don't, I don't have any issue with that. I mean, I, I don't have any issue with it one way or the other. I know the administration floated the idea at the end of last year when, when we were too late to do it. Um, so yeah. Mr. Pavlock accurately makes the, <laughs> the point that- uh, Just from a time standpoint, um, I mean, here we are, roughly halfway through May, if we try to draft something to put out um, mandatory 10 day notice, but I think in this, we'd want to give uh, three to four weeks at least, um, mm -hmm. you, you're, you're pretty much putting yourself up the, uh, up to the, the window. I'm not saying that we should or shouldn't do it. I'm just giving you an understanding of where we stand and the time yeah. to, to put that together, so. Um, then, well, Ma Mayor Slaughter, I guess, what is it? have a quick think on that, a very quick think. It sounds to me like perhaps what we should be doing is between now and the end of the year, um, looking at the, the benefits that Benacon has provided to us so far um, with an eye toward putting together an RFP that would hit the ground um, early in 2022 um, and having time to, to really get an adequate number of responses and then evaluate our situation in mid 2022 to either uh, you know, tell Benicon that we won't be with them in 2023 or, or re-up in a responsible fashion then. Does that sound like a more realistic yeah. time? 
Yeah, I think that sounds more realistic. Plus, that that gives us time for the the uh, financial strategic plan as well and those recommendations. So I think that that's probably a little bit better. Okay, so then why don't we maybe put it kind of in a mental calendar for some time in the in the third quarter to start discussing um, numbers and, and and what the benefits have been so far with that account. Um, and Mr. Pavlov, thank you as always for your exceptionally clear eyed <laughs> review of timing. Um, I, uh, I frequently forget exactly how, uh, how long the timeline can be for, for certain bureaucratic things like this to, um, to really uh, begin to move toward change. Um, Joe, help me look over our income numbers here for 2020 um, and talk to me a bit about, uh, I, I know that we had anticipated um, some drops here in 2021 I'm assuming we haven't seen much indication of that, but I noticed already that our um, local service tax was down by about 25% last year, uh, we believe. Um, and is that related to a much smaller cadre of people working in the city in 2020 than previously? That, that one I'm gonna need to talk to um, Nick on. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I believe that there was some impact from that, but if you, I mean, look at the wage tax, we're still in the same range last year. So um, yeah. I, I don't know with the new collection model, if, if the, the timing of things um, okay. caught up with itself. Figure out, yeah. yeah. And likewise, our, uh, our business privilege revenue was up above what we were expecting. Was that, was that related to us beginning the process of taking it back in house or is it too early to have seen that effect yet in 2020? I, I can't specifically answer that one. Okay, all right. So those are some good questions for Nick then. Yep, I'll, uh, I'll check in with him on that. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that we had dramatically lowered our building permit number um, this year, but I also note that we only achieved about 50% of what we'd estimated for building permits last year. Do we think we're in line to meet the amount that we put in the 2021 budget for building permits? Are we seeing any indications of development in the city that would um, are we, hopefully we're seeing lots of indications of development in the city here this year, because um, it seems like there's sort of an economic surge happening, but, uh, but I'm not sure what you guys with your boots on the ground are seeing. As of today, we're at 25% of budget. We're around seven, $8,000 over where we were last year. Um, and what is our, what was our budget this year? What do we wind up budgeting? Uh, this year, 250. Okay. And um, as of today, we're around 60, 61. Got it. Um, that doesn't necessarily seem positive, but I guess given the difficulty in getting materials and the sort of like some of the economic lags that are going on, that we might, it might take us a while to see permits being issued because people won't know if they'll be able to begin work. Huh? Um, yeah, I, I certainly hope to see that number grow here. Um, I hope that we have a better than expected year in that. Yeah, and it should, because like coming will be starting their projects and different, you know, there's some other items that will be coming up. So I think that number will grow. Okay. And, um, and looking at the 250, that's more of a, in, in prior years, just a, a, a normal construction season, no major project. So having a couple of major projects or, you know, like the mayor said, the Lake Cumming College project should help if, even though we still may be down um, right. With some of the other normal projects. Got it. Um, okay. Uh, Bonnie and Adam, you said you didn't have, did, did you guys have questions on this document or am I, am I jumping all over your? No, uh, you're doing, you're doing fine. You're doing <laughs> okay. fine. Got it. We're right with you. Okay. We're right with you. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're, um, you're, you're fine, Liz. Okay. Uh, and I'm just, uh, hold on here, just scanning. Can I jump through. back to uh, the medical? When the uh, mayor, when they do the study, uh, will that be part of the study? Yeah, they're going, yeah. So they asked for our health insurance and various items. So they're doing, it's going to be pretty comprehensive. Yes. So they're, they're looking at, um, you know, union contracts, uh, health insurance, obviously our, our, you know, general department finances. Uh, so yeah, that's all going to be part of of the uh, study and analysis, and then the recommendations and reports given to council and administration. So yes. So therefore, we'll get a a, a clear understanding of where we do stand 
with with the medical at that point that should help us for next year uh and maybe they would also have ideas on that also yeah yeah i believe they probably will i think that's why i believe it was a a good idea that you know liz suggested holding off until you know third quarter because by the third quarter obviously uh, we'll start to have some of these reports and and drafts of they said by the by the beginning of november it should be completed Right. Yeah. But I mean, along the way, though, they're going to be giving us you know, updates. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is fantastic. That's going to help us tremendously. And in, in what we're looking at, then we're not going to go into this blind, you know, and and having to do a lot of oh, we're still going to have to do a lot of homework. But this is going to give us a guideline. OK, thank you. Thanks, Bonnie. Um, if I can uh, go down further into last year's budget. Um, I'm just looking real quick at our recreation budget from last year. Um, that was my next question. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> All right, Bonnie, you get you take that one then. <laughs> Joe, I Joe Pavlock, I really don't understand these figures what, from last what, year. What page are we on? We are on what's uh, is there a top, page number on top, this? Uh, right hand corner. Right hand, oh, page five. Uh, well, I'm, I'm looking my, at page 14, but okay. Let me go back to page five. Page five is about revenue. In revenue, or you talk about the expenditures? Expenditures. Yeah, yeah you want to go down to 13. Okay. I, I, if you're talking about the recreation administration expenditures, this is right. this is the uh, recreation coordinators budget, uh, specifically the office budget. Um, so these are the costs for that. If you go down to the next page, page 14, uh, you'll see the recreation programs, which is the park programs. Um, there are some fixed costs in there uh, that are split amongst departments like workers comp, um, which is going to show up whether we have the people or not. And then we can reallocate everything, but yeah, don't typically do that. And then on page uh, 19 is uh, the pools. So for the pools, 2600, I'm sorry, $4,600 was spent on electricity and uh, those allocated personnel costs. Um, mm-hmm. For the recreation program, 80, 8,900 of that. Again, it was electric and, and allocated personnel costs, but also in there, um, were the was the cultural grant program i think that that might need to get reduced by 1500 for a program that was awarded but um didn't actually occur so i'll have to check on that one Mm -hmm. and then as i said the other one was for the the office and staff got it okay okay sorry i jumped ahead of all this liz and i'm sorry what's that no, 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 no. I think that makes perfect sense. And if you have questions on recreation income, feel free to ask them too. But I'm, I'm not surprised that there wasn't much <laughs> under the circumstances. Um, uh, and um, are, are we looking at any kind of amplified recreation programming this year um, is, since we don't have the pool? I'm sorry. I, I sometimes looking at last year's budget makes me think of questions about this year. So I apologize. Yeah. I'm going to jump Leave around doing two street food festivals, that seems to be pretty popular. So we've discussed doing, uh, well, we are doing one here coming up and then one uh, possibly in the fall. We had a date for the fall, but it conflicted with um, Brickyard is, is doing one. Uh, so we're mm-hmm. looking at changing the date. Um, I know the rec committee is, or commission uh, is discussing some other uh, rec items, but yeah, you know, it's obviously we've gotten tremendous um, interest in homemade days and the street food festival and you know the various items that we're doing lots of vendors reaching out asking to be a part of that so uh, we are looking at increasing some other uh, recreational opportunities now that you know clearly at the end of this month beginning of june uh, mitigation efforts are going to be lifted um so yeah you know concerts in the park all that type of thing of adding additional items yes are we going to are we going to do williamsport welcomes the world this year so Jason Fink, um, I don't want to get out uh, in front of myself, but uh, him and I had a, a 
brief discussion, uh, and I think he'll be providing an update uh, on that uh, in the near future. So we uh, will be doing uh, something, I believe. So I don't want to, you know, I, I don't know if the chamber is ready and necessary to go public with all of the, uh, you know, it's still under uh, planning. So because we're in the city's in charge of the vendors for Williamsport. Well, right, correct. Yes. So <laughs> I've, been, I've been in touch. We've been working on it. And um, now that obviously there will be a U.S. Uh, tournament, uh, you know, things are underway. Um, and same with the, uh, the classic, the Lily Classic. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're in the planning stages for that as well. Great. Well, it's good to see that things are going to be back to a little bit of normalcy here. Mm -hmm. First Saturday was incredible to see all the people that were out on the street. I mean, that was, it was just so wonderful. It really was. Uh, and I think everybody that was there just, you saw the excitement and, and everybody's looking forward to so much other things that are going to be going on throughout the area. It's a shame first Friday got rained out, but um, you see how the public really wants things done now. They really do. Yeah, that's right. The world's gone nuts and everybody wants to get out there and do things. Yeah, yeah I think there's a big, there's a big appetite for um, activities that, that actually put us in contact with one another. You got and it. I think it's, a, well, and it's an excellent opportunity for us to get to know our community again. And I would hate to see us miss it, you know, um, this year, because I don't think that the same opportunity will exist in years to come. I think there's an enthusiasm for seeing other people and meeting other people this year um, that won't. That, that hopefully will carry through, but may not carry through with the same uh, level uh, in, in years to come. Um, I guess the other thing that I was kind of asking Derek is we're not contemplating any uh, increasing the, the number of kids we serve with our parks pro with our um, parks program at all, are we? Uh, I don't know, actually, we were talking about the yesterday because we were uh, holding interviews uh, for camp counselors and uh, you know numbers could be up, so. You know, I think everyone obviously is looking forward to getting out and about, like uh, Bonnie just said. So, um, you know, we, we're anticipating maybe an increase in our numbers for camp. So uh, we just have to wait to see. I mean, applications are out, all the info's out. So we just have to see how that plays out. But um, <clears throat> we were discussing yesterday the need for potentially, potentially the need to have to hire additional camp counselors if our numbers uh, climb, which yeah. they, they very well might. Yeah. Um, well, that would be... I, I, I think that would be a good thing, I, yeah, especially because we're not offering a, a pool this year in the city. I think we should make sure that we meet demand in other areas uh, recreationally. No, um, and added so many uh, great facilities in the last year or two to our parks. You know, we've, we've, we've added the nature play area and Brandon Park, the new, um, par the new playground at Memorial. Um, so it would be good to, to get kids into contact with that, with, with those opportunities at least. Um, Okay, uh, Bonnie, Adam, anything else in this general area? No. Okay. Um, I sh should mention looking through streets and parks that um, Chad Eckert informed me that the Tree Vitalized program, which we've used to really put a number of street trees in, in the city in the last couple of years has been decommissioned by the state and they're hoping to introduce something else in a year or two. Um, but uh, I, because we've been able to do so much good work with street trees and, and, and larger trees um, in parks and, and on streets in the city. Um, it might be something, if we can find the funding, that we should look to, to pursue ourselves uh, in, the, um, in the upcoming budget year so that we can continue to add trees and, and, and really amplify our um, Tree City USA status there. Um, uh, I would just, I'd hate to see us lose steam on that when we've really gotten some good stuff going on uh, because the, the state grant funding right up. Um, and it's only the, the, the annual grant amount is, I think, nine or ten thousand dollars. It's not a huge chunk of change. It pays for the trees and we provide all the labor. So it, it's, you know, it's, it's a pretty small amount and it goes a really long way to, to beautifying the city. Um, but uh, OK. Um, look at flood control. It doesn't seem to me that I had all that many questions. Hold on, I'm just going to go ahead and scan down the public safety. One other item that I just said too, 4th of July planning is underway. Um, okay. We did have to apply to the state uh, for a waiver um, with the PennDOT's uh, new um, indemnification guidelines, I guess you could call it. 
Um, so we'll wait and hear back from that. That just relates to the bridge. Um, mm -hmm. Same with the Flag Day March. Um, mm -hmm. we, you know, the Commonwealth, we have, we're waiting on them as well. So not sure where we're going to uh, be with that. But anyway, so there's the, you know, PennDOT updated some of their uh, guidelines. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it's just kind of a waiting game right now. But, but planning is underway. Okay. And we expect them to respond in a timely fashion so that we're not held up by state processes. Good. Correct. Yeah, they did. They did reply right away and said that it was received and it's being received. Okay, good. Um, Derek, yeah. if you could, if I could ask you to please sit on their tail that they don't put it under the bottom of the pile, because I yeah. know everybody is really wants to see the, the, the fireworks downtown this year. And yeah. uh you know, sometimes was, yeah. you get framed when you have a, a big organization like PennDOT and uh, here's little old Williamsport coming through and asking for a permit for fireworks and they may not think that's important, which we know it is important. Yep, nope, I will, yep, stay in regular contact with them. Okay, Great. appreciate that. Um, got it. Uh, then just looking down to um, to public safety, it looks like, our, uh, our, we were over budget on overtime in the police department, um, not in the fire department, which is nice. Have, have we, do we, I mean, and comp time was up dramatically, uh, which is surprising given the shutdown and the fact that we were running kind of minimum manning for a while. Um, can you, uh, do, do we know why those costs were, were higher than anticipated? Um, and I'm not going to see attrition there, right? It's not like it's not I like can't see back with the final budget and say, "Oh, never mind, overtime wasn't that much." <laughs> I can't, I can't speak to specifics. Uh, I think that's better for the chief. But I do recall a number of events, even though um, you know, the, with the shutdowns that were in place, um, the political rallies, things of that nature, um, the event in Brandon Park. I think there were things that called in overtime. Uh, specific mm -hmm. events that aren't normal reoccurring events. Um, but yeah. I defer to the, the chief on okay. answering if, that. If you remember, the chief was going on about how many in incidents were going on in the city. Um, yeah. We had a couple of shootings and, you know, this, this, all, this all takes manpower. And this is where the chief was going on, where the overtime was coming from. Yeah, I, 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 I remember all those discussions. And I think that that's um, I, yeah, and, and especially to Joe's point, some of the sort of larger unanticipated public events that we had. Um, I'm just hoping that we uh, can succeed in keeping overtime under budget here in the, in the coming budget year when we're not anticipating some of the same, uh, especially political activity, <laughs> ideally in a, in a non-election year, <laughs> um, in, a, in a recovery year, we won't, we won't see some of the same sort of rally things that we, that we saw last year. Um, so, uh, hopefully, but, but I, it seems to me from our OT numbers, um, that, that ne didn't necessarily look to be the case. Uh, does anyone else have any other questions about this document? I think I pretty much, um, asked everything I had before I move on. Um, I can't find this in here right now. Um, a line item with, are we doing, what are we doing with the infrastructure of the city hall? Um, any expenditures there? I can't find that here. It, that's not in our operating budget. That's not under the operating. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, it's, um, I do know like Joe, you're freezing in your office. I do know that Janice is roasting in hers. So the, the HVAC system in city hall is really a mess right now. And hopefully eventually we are going to be back in city hall and I, you know, we're going to have to figure out how we're going to work that out. Yeah, right now, the, obviously, the, the uh, ramp and elevator, and then we're going to move uh, inside, so to speak, uh, with the uh, bathrooms, fire alarms, uh, HVAC, all of those items, uh, access controls. So John is John and Chris, myself, uh, Joe Girardi, we've started to discuss that. But as we get through the ramp and elevator and, and then come inside, that obviously will be discussed in much more detail. I know Obviously, last year, Councilman Yoder and through the ad hoc, we've discussed that as well. So uh, there's been a lot of discussion around that. Once we do finally get inside and, uh, you know, start to really look at those projects, then uh, we come back to the, to the table, so to speak. Good. 
Um, yeah, well, it's, uh, it certainly will be excited, uh, exciting to meet some of the needs of this, uh, um, oh, here we go, of, of City Hall, finally. <laughs> um, yeah. One other thing real quick. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you. Yeah, go. Uh, I just got an email, Flag Day March, due to the, uh, they're going to call it a Flag Day celebration now. It's going to be entirely on uh, Penn College's campus. It didn't, uh, the Flag Day folks didn't want to wait for the Commonwealth. So um, they're going to do everything uh, on the college, Penn College's campus this year instead of the normal route starting at the Transportation Museum on 4th. Uh, so anyways, uh, more details of that to follow. Okay. Um, well, it would be nice to get it back out into the city at some point, but I can understand not wanting to, to hang on for the um, Commonwealth because uh, it does seem like some of that, some of those permits can take quite a while and we don't have that long before Flag Day at this point. Um, but thanks for the update, Mayor. Uh, okay, I, if there's nothing further on the 2012-31 or 1231-2020 budget, um, I guess, can we take a quick look at the police overtime numbers this year versus last year? Um, guys, should we do that or, sorry. Yes, yeah, sure. All right. Um, uh, so Jill, hold on a minute. There was something that I remember noticing here. We're looking at the March 31st. I am looking at the March 31st numbers, although I'm happy to look at the- um, oh, I just wanted to make sure I had the right one up. Yeah. Because it does, I mean, if you look year to date, uh, cost incurred were $25,000. Um, yeah. Under uh, where it was, but I think what you may have noticed- Was the um, paper. Is the banked time. Mm -hmm. um, it, yeah, it also is one pay period down, but there is an increase in the banked time. So um, if, if you know, when, when they start to use that time, that will. Uh... Yeah, so we're up about 50% on bank time and down, uh, it looks like about 30% on OT cost. I don't know what that, um, yeah, I mean, we're up 40,000 on bank time and, and down only 25. So I guess theoretically our overtime is still climbing. It's just climbing its comp time. Would that be an accurate summary, especially given that we were a pay period behind? That is to say, just for clear, just for clarity's sake, that this, these numbers came up from pay period six in 2021 and pay period seven in 2020. So um, by necessity, the, the, that the numbers are um, a certain amount behind the, the estimate from 2020, just because it's, you know, we're, we're two weeks difference. Um, in terms of pay period. Uh, so it looks as though our overtime costs are up this year over last year at this time. Would be my, would be my reading of the situation. Correct, Joe? It, it appears that way to myself. Okay. Um, I don't, I, I, uh, I do feel like that's something, um, and, and Mayor Slaughter, you're probably the better person to put that to, but something that we, need to be working really hard to keep an eye on this year, um, or at least to understand. Um, I mean, we, in all the discussion about um, adding officers to the force, et cetera, et cetera, you know, it would seem as though part of that discussion necessarily has to be, we are, we are spending X on overtime. Can we reduce our overtime costs by the cost of a new officer? <laughs> um, if we, you know what I mean? Uh, that, that some of that has to, has to happen. And, and I, I know it's not an, uh, it's not a direct correlation, but um, uh, I, I, and and I also know that overtime is generated by a number of different factors. But I, I uh, it seems as though we really have seen a substantial uptick in overtime costs um, recently, and that maybe uh, the the flex shift not being used as much as it could be. I'm not, I'm not quite certain, but I think we need to be looking into that before it becomes um, more of an issue in 2021. Uh, Bonnie and Adam, what are your thoughts on that? Well, with summer coming, warmer weather, people getting antsy, getting out and everything, uh, over time could be accelerated. Exactly. And I think this is something that we're, you know, everybody's going to have to be aware of. And uh, Mayor, I think, you know, uh, it's about time to sit down with the chief and find out where we can go to alleviate some of this overtime. 
yeah, I, I, yeah, I think we just, I, yeah, I think we need to be having um, discussions about it uh, on a consistent basis to try and make certain that we underscore the need to, to control our overtime costs. Um, Cause we, you know, if, if last year was already over budget um, and this year we are higher than last year at, at this time. Uh, and this, these are the 331 numbers, which were pre-pandemic. So most of them. Um, so yeah, we, uh, yeah, it, it, it's something that we are gonna need to work on this year, I think clearly. Uh, if I hear no other comments, um, we can move on real quickly to the 331-21 finance report. Anybody? I'm fine. Sure. Okay. Um, and there's never all that much that we can get out of the first quarter reports, but Joe Poplock, you have anything of note that you'd like to point out here? Um, no, I don't. <laughs> um, oh, come on, Joe. <laughs> Make it interesting, Joe. Yeah, come on. Okay. If I, I'll say anything, and I think Liz, you usually pick up on this. If, if we look at where we're at, we're a quarter of the way through the year, and we're spending. Uh, we've spent eighteen percent of the budgeted numbers. So, thank you. Yeah. This point that my we're, mind too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Within our, you know, we're working within our budgets, but um, we'll have to keep an eye on things as the year progresses. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, right. We're, we clearly are, are by and large within budget, which is a good thing. I mean, my assumption would be that 18% puts us at about the proper threshold to be at 25% once all actual expenditures come in, Joe. Do you see what I'm saying? That, that I'm assuming the 331 numbers, there might still be some uh, spending out there that hasn't been accounted for, or would you say that's not accurate? Uh, you're, you're talking delays in getting bills paid? Yeah. Well, I guess if we look at it as of today, 5, 10, 5, 11, um, the, the numbers are at 26%. So okay. that's, a, that's a month after and typically a 30-day term. So um, that would lead me to believe your assumptions are correct. Okay, got it. So, um, so that's the numbers we need to look for. Um, so then on that note, guys, the current police over the police overtime numbers as of 341 were only at 10% of budget, but the comp time numbers were already at 22% of budget. Um, once again, given that, that summer um, and fall tend to be busier seasons to so the police department, leading me to say that, that we really need to be keeping a good eye on those numbers moving forward. Um, uh, fire department seems to have overtime at about 10% too, which is probably a good number there since they don't really have a corollary comp time. Um, uh, all right, any questions, Bonnie, Adam, from you guys? No. Nope. No, just, I mean, I, I, I think we always push this to come in under budget, but I think it's even more critical this year after, you know, cutting as much as we could mm -hmm. last year. Um, and then I think we definitely want to be poised to go into next year um, in as good a position as we can. So, you know, if we actually spent 25% um, with hindsight, you know, I mean, we're on budget. We're not under budget. We're on budget. So, I mean, I, we want to be under. And we want to be under. So that the, the challenge still remains. And, and, mm -hmm. and I think the administration's up to the task. I just, I just, I hope we can see it more. Is all. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I think I think we are, and I think we're we're keeping a pretty good eye on things. Um, to the point of arriving in 2022, well funded and and ready for action. Uh, are we moving on on fixing the issue with the pool so that we'll be good to open the pool up come 2022? Yes, we are. Yep. So streets and parks, uh, they are ready to start chasing that leak. Um, okay. See where that's coming okay. from, so we can get that all rectified. Okay. Um, cause I can't speak for other members of council or for the administration, but I've picked up quite a bit of blowback about the pool, um, and the pool not being open this year. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, right. Um, and so I think that is something that we need to, uh, work to, you know, bring it back and roaring back and in great condition. In yep, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Like, especially, you know, this year with that leak, if we would open with the cost of chlorine and chemicals that leaking out, that would have not been a, a good cost to incur. <laughs> Yeah. So we'll get that all fixed up. I agree. Um, and I uh, felt the blowback too. So, yep, we're looking forward to get everything fixed and ready to go for 2022. Good. All right. Fantastic. 
Um, then do I hear any other comments? I don't think so. Okay. Well, despite Janice's wildest hopes, I'm guessing that we are, we're, we're right close to the end of our general meeting time. <laughs> so it's going to be an hour and a half one way or the other. Um, anyway, uh, if nobody has, uh, I guess we do have one last item on our agenda. Um, having taken care of both of our discussion items on our, uh, on our financial reports, and that is any related items. Does anyone have anything to introduce? I just have one real quick that the rescue sure. plan, obviously you probably saw that portal opened up. Uh, we did submit everything and uh, we have applied, uh, uh, you know, everything is taken care of for the city of Waynesport. So everything is submitted on the tenant review process. So we're all good to go there. I worked with Joe Pavlock this morning and we got it all taken care of. Fantastic. All right. Excellent. Um, so did we stipulations related to the money yet? Did that ever, did that, that, that is out? Yes. So that came out yesterday afternoon. Uh, if you just go to U.S. Treasury, uh, you'll be able to uh, see all the, the oh, it's all there. Yeah, Great. it's all there. Yep. Yep. Thank you. All right. Um, it, yeah, it might be. Well, I guess keep, keep us updated on our success there and we'll all try to review the, the stipulations, but um, yep. it might be wise for us to have a discussion uh, related to, to that and, and to those stipulations at some point here in the next couple of weeks um, yes. as we find out whether or not we've, we've gotten the funding we anticipated. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So once we do, once, uh, you know, once our applications are reviewed and if it is the two separate uh, disbursements, then obviously we'll have to have a, you know, a lot of conversations of, mm -hmm. around that. So. Yep, I agree. Okay, fantastic. Um, any further announcements? All right, here and none, I would take a motion to adjourn. So move. Bonnie, you okay. want to I couldn't get my mute off. <laughs> oh, no problem. Happens to me all the time. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 And I frequently can't get my mute on, Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> Those friggin' headphones are a blessing and a curse. Anyway, um, it was nice to see y'all here. And, uh, and I guess I'll see y'all again on Thursday, huh? See you on Thursday. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.